Before going into the video, viewers who prefer to memorize concepts over comprehending them may not find this video appropriate. In this video, we will be understanding Mendel's contrasting traits. At the end of the video, we will understand why certain traits are dominant and why certain traits are recessive in the seven contrasting traits of Mendel's experiment. At the end of the video, you will no longer be memorizing the seven contrasting traits. So watch the video till the end. These are the seven contrasting traits of Mendel's experiment. It includes flower color, plant height, seed color, seed shape, pod color, pod shape and flower position. In each of these traits, we have a dominant trait and a recessive trait. So these two are going to be the contrasting traits in each of these traits. So in order to understand this concept, we should be aware of natural selection, which was given by Charles Darwin. And this is basically survival of the fittest. Now let's have a look at the contrasting traits one by one. The first trait is the flower color. In this, the dominant trait is the purple color and the recessive trait is the white color. We know that to facilitate pollination through insects like honeybees, the flowers have to be colorfully attractive. Therefore, a purple color is going to be more colorfully attractive than a white color. That is why by natural selection, purple color is a dominant trait. The next trait is plant height. In this, the tall stem is dominant compared to the shorter one which is recessive. Now let's understand why is a tall stem dominant over a shorter one. A tall stem means the plant can bear more number of flowers. More number of flowers means a greater number of progeny. And also as the height increases, the efficiency of wind pollination also increases. The next trait is seed color. This is one of the common area where most of the students get confused which is the dominant trait and which is the recessive trait. Now let's understand why is yellow dominant compared to the green seed. We know that humans or in general animals will prefer a green seed than a yellow seed. So, in order to prevent predation, natural selection has selected out yellow as the dominant color compared to the green seed. The next trait is seed shape. The round seed is dominant compared to the wrinkled one. Now let us consider this scenario. If the seed is removed from the pod, it will obviously roll down the hill or in fact the soil. Now if a seed has to roll down, it has to be perfectly round. So the more round the seed is, the more distance it can move and the more efficient is the seed growth. So a wrinkled seed will not be able to move such a farther distance. So that's why round seed is dominant compared to the wrinkled one. So the next trait is pod color. We can clearly see that the green pod color is dominant towards the yellow pod color. Now why is green pod color dominant and why not a green seed color? Now let's consider a predator which is attracted towards this green pod and during the time of consumption there is a high chance of seed droppage. So the more attractive the pod is, the more chances of dropping the seed into the soil. So more chances of progeny. The next trait is the pod shape. We have the inflated pod which is dominant to the constricted one. And yes, this is again similar to the reason we had seen for pod color. 
a inflated pod is going to be more attractive than a constricted one and also a inflated pod has more chances of rolling motion compared to a constricted pod the last pair of contrasting traits is the flower position in this the axial flowers are dominant over the terminal flowers in an axial flower the flowers are born on the axis of the flower so therefore after bearing flowers the growth of the branch or stem is not restricted but this is not the case in a terminal flower in a terminal flower the growth is restricted after bearing a flower so in an axial flower which is dominant trait the number of flowers is not restricted since the growth is not restricted but in case of terminal flowers the number of flowers is limited because the growth of the branch or the stem is restricted so more the number of flowers more will be the progeny so therefore the dominant trait is the axial flowers